Amen. Truly, it's a blessing to be together again. Uh, even though we're online, we're still here. We're thanking God for all of his love and that he's shown toward us. Uh, I would ask that you all would bow your head with me in the word of prayer. Our Father God, we come now thanking you, Lord God, for this opportunity and this day that you've created with us in mind. Lord God, we ask that you would touch everyone that uh, can hear my voice, Lord. We ask that you would uh, look on our entire church family. Lord God, bless those that uh, are in the bereavement. And Lord, uh, lift up their bowed down heads and give ease to their troubled minds, Lord God. We ask that you would uh, let your Holy Spirit fall fresh on each and every one of us. Guide us, direct us, keep us, love us, Lord God, as you have always done. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. These blessings we ask and we thank you for. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Truly, again, I say, you know, to all of our loved ones that uh, is going through some things right now, uh, we, we asked, I, I don't know his last name, but they called him uh, uh, Coach Tommy, one of the friends of our own, Tyrone Sampson, my friend as well. Uh, we're praying for his family uh, as they go through, you know, we're going to. Keep them up in prayer because a lot of times people say, uh, all I can do is pray for you, but that's the best thing you can do is pray because it's power in prayer and that's for certain. So uh, as we go through this, we're going to remember that to pray ye one for another. Amen. Um, God has truly laid uh, uh, something on my heart for us all. And I would ask you all, if you would, to go with me in scripture, get your Bibles out and go with me to First Chronicles. First Chronicles, the 13th chapter. First Chronicles, the 13th chapter. Amen. Beginning at the first verse. Wherein it reads as follows. And David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, if it seem good unto you and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel and with them also to the priests and Levites, which are in the cities and suburbs, that they may gather themselves unto us. And let us bring again the ark of our God to us, for we inquire not at it in the days of Saul. And all the congregation said that they would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. And David gathered all Israel together for Shihar of Egypt, even unto the entering of Haman, to bring the ark of God from Karjajim, Jerem, I'm sorry. And David went up in all Israel and Bala, that is to Kajar Jerem, which belonged to Judah, to bring up thence the ark of God, the Lord that dwelleth between the cherubims, whose name is called on it. And they carried the ark of God in a new cart out of the house of Abinadab, I'm sorry, and Uzziah, and Ahio drave the cart. And David and all of Israel played before God with all their might and with singing and with harps and with with psalm streets and with uh, timbrels and with cymbals and with trumpets. And when they came unto the threshing floor of Shidon, Uzziah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. 
And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzziah, and he smote him because he put his hand to the ark, and there he died before God. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzziah, wherefore that place is called Perez Uzziah to this day. And David was afraid of God that day, saying, how shall I bring the ark of God home to me? I like to use for a thought on this day as we look at this text, I like to use for thought, good housekeeping, good housekeeping. As we look and realize the fact that David had deep in his heart uh, to get the Ark of the Covenant, he knew the importance of having that Ark because that Ark represented and was the presence of God. And he knew how important it was to have that presence presence of God with them because they could do nothing without the presence of God. They wouldn't win no battles. They, they, it wasn't nothing at all. And that's why the Israelites have been uh, torn apart because they didn't have that with them. And so as time went on and here in our text, we see that David and it was, uh, they went in and built a brand new cart to carry the Ark of the Covenant on. But they didn't hold to the scriptures and to the word of God as to how to handle the Ark of the Covenant. And so just like it was said in this text that Uzziah, as they was traveling, uh, it stumbled. You know, the oxen stumbled and then the Ark began to look as if it was about to fall. And he put his hand forth to stop it. And it caused his demise because he didn't handle it properly. It's very important to uh, do as God tells us to do because uh, uh, this ark was very sacred, you know? And so they went on and David was displeased and was upset. He was upset because Uzziah had died. And not only was he upset, but he was also afraid. He was afraid. That scared him. You look up and he went out the hole, put his hand to that ark and to stop it from falling in this and fell dead. So then they out there stuck and trying to figure what what can we do with this ark? What, what, what can we do with it? I can't get it back to Jerusalem like this. So they looked out and God always got around in the bush. And this, 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 they looked out and looked all around and they saw a house and went. And David said, we're gonna take it over to that house. And they went. And I can see him now knocking on the door. And old Ben Edom opened the door. And no doubt uh, he had done heard and saw what had happened, that Uzziah had them put his hand out and to, to stop the ark from falling, the ark of the covenant from falling, and it caused him to die. But David told him that he was going to bring the ark of the covenant in old Ben Edom's house. And you got to understand uh, that this art and how they handle it, you know, it really matters because it could cause your demise. It, it can make you uh, great things occur or it can pull you all the way down if it's not handled properly. So Obed Edom and this guy had to be living a certain type of way in order for them to bring the Ark of the Covenant into his house. So they brought the Ark of the Covenant. They came on in and put it in Obed Edom's house. And it remained there. They say for three months, Obed Edom was uh, uh, no doubt going, doing everything he did as far as around his house. But the Ark of the Covenant was there. The presence of the Lord was inside of Obed Edom's house. And I, I just, you know, it said it remained there for three months. Not only did it remain there for three months, it said that Obed Edom was blessed because of the Ark of the Covenant being in his house. And not only was he blessed, but his entire family and everything he had was blessed because of the Ark of the Covenant being in his house. You know, I think about the Ark of the Covenant being in his house and, 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 and it don't go into detail but when we say in the Ark of the Covenant, we're really saying the presence of God was in his house. So I, 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 uh, maybe Obed Edom probably 
had a, a, a back problem or something like that. And, and as that presence of God was in there, you know, it, it, his back probably started feeling better. And it, on the inside, his spirit just started feeling better. His kids started glowing. It, it, something happens when the presence of God is in your house. That's why I say to you today, uh, in this day that we live in, even prior to any of this that's going on, it's very important that we do some good housekeeping. Obed Eden had to uh, be done done good housekeeping because the Ark of the Covenant was even, it went in there, nobody died. You know, he had to be a certain way. He had to be approved of, of God for it to even be there because everybody in the house would have died if something was wrong. But the presence of God was able to be there in the house of Obed Eden. Now look what happened. Uh, it remained there for three months. And you know, a whole lot had to go on. I know it was some praising, some worshiping. They you, Look, Obed Eden and them had church for three months straight. They, I know they were praising, worshiping, falling on their face. And you, I mean, the presence of the Lord is right here, three months straight in the house of old Ben Edom. It's been gone for a while from the Israelites. Not only has it been gone from the whole group, of, of, of the whole tribe, all of them tribes, it was gone. They didn't have it. They knew the significance of it. And this man, I had never heard about in scripture until the Ark of the Covenant wind up in his house. See, to God, everybody is special. This man was just on the side of the road. You know, he just happened to just happened to be living there, let everybody tell it, but God placed him there and he was born to hold the Ark of the Covenant in his house. But after that, then uh, it says his whole family was blessed. Yeah, they was blessed because Obed-Edom uh, uh, dealing with the presence of God when David came and realized how to handle that uh, Ark of the Covenant, he did so in the right way. And they took the Ark of the Covenant out of Obed-Edom's house. But look what happened. Obed-Edom didn't even want to stay there no more. He packed up his household, his family, and they went with the Ark of the Covenant. See, because of the presence of the Lord, Obed-Edom had got that hit from uh, uh, the spirit of God. He knew how it felt. He didn't want to be without that ever again. So you and I, I, I say to everybody, you know, if, if we look, uh, if you follow me, I got another scripture I want us to go to. And that's uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 9. I'll give you guys a chance to get there. 1 Corinthians 3 and 9. Go with me there. Amen. You see, the thing of it is, it's very important that that we, uh, you know, know it's very important that we uh, realize how important the presence of God uh, is to us. The, the, the what you know is in our everyday life is very important. We have to have it. It ain't that we. Uh, you know, just desire this, that, and the other. No, you got to have it because you can't do nothing. And the Bible, it says in him that we live, move, and have our being. And if you want uh, uh, to be blessed like Obed-Edom, you got to let the Lord fall down on the inside of you. If you want to have the favor of God, you got to live a certain kind of way. The Bible also tells, I'm going to read that scripture in a little bit, but the Bible also tells us that uh, uh, one day we're going to have to give an account for what we did in these bodies. See, that's what I want to get you to know when you think about Obed-Edom taking uh, the Ark of the Covenant being in his house and how blessed he was because Jesus came and he died and was uh, 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 got up out of the grave the third day and have all power in the palm of his hand. And then when he left, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. He was going to release that same spirit that was on that Ark of the Covenant. He releasing it out to us. Because if we accept Jesus into our life and ask him to forgive us for our sins, 
then that's that good housekeeping. He come in right then, right there, and he'll clean you up with the blood of the lamb. He'll clean you up on the inside because that house is this body. It's this temple. This is the house that you got to make sure that you do some good housekeeping because, you see, it's on God. God is the one that takes care of us. God is the one, he said it, that's our provider. God is the one that see about us. Our job is to trust him, to nurture uh, uh, this our soul and read the word of God so that it'll edify us and keep us strong. That's doing good housekeeping. We, we, keeping, we gotta watch the back door, the front door. We gotta watch every part to not let any of the evil of this old evil world on the inside of us. We got to make sure we do some good housekeeping because the day gonna come when we look up and we see Jesus, not like he was, but when we see him as he is, then we got to give an account for what we did in this house. We got to give an account for what we did good and what we did bad if we hadn't asked for forgiveness of it. It's very important. And it is our job to make sure that we do some good housekeeping. I tell you all the time, and uh, in scripture, it tells us that our body is not our own. It belongs to the Lord. That's right. He's the one that came down through 42 generations and bought and paid for this body. He bought and paid for my soul. It's his. I give it to Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sink and stand. I tell you right now that it's very important. Look around, brothers. Look around, sisters. And can't nobody do it for you. Mama can't do it. Daddy can't do it. Husband can't do it and wife can't do it. You got to do some good housekeeping for yourself. And as I was telling you in 1 Corinthians 3 and 9, look, it says, for we are God's fellow workers. Ye are God's husbandry. And look, God's building. That means you belong to him. And your job is to do some good housekeeping. You got to make sure this thing is clean. Like Obed-Edom. He had his house in order, good enough for the presence of the Lord to come in. And when he came in, he 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 sat up and he healed Obed Edom's house as they praised and worshiped and magnified. I know they had a good time. Them three months, he stayed there with Obed Edom for a season. And that same thing, see God, uh, he he don't look uh, on one better than the other. He he, he is not a. Uh, of persons. He's not that. He don't look at us like that. Like he looked at old bad Edom, he's looking at you. And if you do some good housekeeping, he'll come in. Oh yeah. And like he blessed old bad Edom, he'll bless you. And he won't stop there because it went down through the generations of old bad Edom because it say that old bad Edom wind up moving with the ark. He didn't want to leave out of the presence of God no more. And look what happened. He became a gatekeeper. <laughs> and a musician and a doorkeeper for the ark. Yes, he did. And then he was blessed to have eight sons. Look how blessed he was. And his sons was put in charge of the, uh, no, he was in charge of the South Gate and his sons was keepers of the storehouse. That means that his household was blessed beyond measure. Blessed like only God can do. When you look out through our scripture, it'll show you that, uh, 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 everybody that, that God used, they had to be doing some good housekeeping. Look at uh, Job. We look all the way back to Job. When God took and dealt with Job and Job went through this, that, and the other, the reason he came out was because Job was doing some good housekeeping. Oh, yeah. He he, he was, he, it's a man that loved God and assumed evil. That's how we have to do. We got to stand on what's right. We got to stand on what's righteous. We got to stand on the word of God. I don't know about you, but I'm standing on the promises of Jesus. It don't matter what chaos all around me. I'm standing on the promises of Jesus and I'm going to be a, 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 a good housekeeper. I'm going I'm to make sure I'm being a good housekeeper because when that day of the Lord comes, he going to come and he gonna, I'm going to be able to look at him. I'm going to be able to look at him and, and not feel bad about 
the things that I have done wrong in my life because he took it and threw it into the sea of forgetfulness. I'm telling you right now, it's time for us all to quit playing games. Titles don't matter. It don't matter whether you reverend, doctor, whatever. The only thing matters is that you like Obed Edom name means servant. That's what you got to be, a servant of God. And you got to, got to be doing some good housekeeping so that your family and yourself will be blessed. And not only that, on this side of the river, but when it's all said and done, because this life and our lives, it's just a vapor. This goes by so fast, you know? Uh, what matters is what we do so that we, when we really go into living in uh, eternity, when time is no more, huh, where are we going to be from that point on? It, you see... Uh, how how hard it is in everyday life when you don't have something you need and what it does to you uh, on this side of the river when when the turmoil and the troubles of this world like the old song say soon I will be done with the troubles of the world I'm going home to live with God we got to know that in our final resting it's going to be with God our final resting place we gonna be looking on him in our final resting place where the streets will be made of gold and we'll be able to look and see all of the marble and the gates and all of the angels and look on God and take it all in and it's just good from that day on. Ain't no more uh, uh, funeral hearses rolling up and down the street. That day is over with. Ain't no more dying. That day is coming, but you got to be doing some good housekeeping. If you can hear my voice right now, there is time and room at the cross for you. If you can hear my voice and understand there's a blessing all by itself, and it's giving you time to, to, to get it straight. Ain't no more sweeping the dirt under the rug. You got to do some good housekeeping. Ain't no more stacking boxes in the closet. You got to do some good housekeeping. Ain't no more your yard is all tore up and everything. You got to do some good housekeeping. Because when he comes, he going he gonna to ask, what did you do? What did you do with the talents I gave you? What did you do with, with the body that I gave you? What did you do with that building I gave you? What did you do with it? Did you do good with it or did you? do evil with it. He's going to ask you and it's required of you and he charges you to do what's right. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I know that Jesus died, uh, uh, came down through 42 generations. I'm glad that I know that he came and walked through the streets, healing the sick and open, open and blinded eyes. I'm glad that I know that Jesus went on and allowed them to uh, nail his hands to the cross. I'm so glad I know that he allowed them to drive nails through his feet. I'm glad I know that he allowed them to pierce him in his side and put a crown of thorns on his head. I'm glad I know that he gave up the ghost. Oh, yeah. They couldn't kill him. They couldn't kill him. He had to give up the ghost. And when he gave it up, just like he gave it up, and, and, and he, he bowed his head between the locks of his shoulders and gave it up and said, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. Oh, yeah. But it didn't stop there. Oh, no, no. He stayed there for a while and hell thought they won. He stayed there uh, all Saturday. All Saturday, the demons was running around and on this earth, they just knew that they had got rid of the Christ. They killed him. It's over with. Oh, no, no. But early Sunday morning, yeah, he got up from the grave with all power in heaven and earth in the palm of his hand. He got up so that we'll be able to do some good housekeeping. He got up so that we'll be able to clean these temples out and his Holy Spirit can abide on the inside of us. Yes, we're man, we're, we're part body, and then we have a soul, but it's up to you which spirit is down on the inside of you. If you allow him to clean you up, and then you would be doing some good housekeeping, then his spirit can fall fresh on you. And then you'll do things that you never thought you'd do before. Because it ain't you. It's the God in you. Allow uh, the presence of the Lord to be on the inside of you so that you can carry it into your home. 
Make sure you do that. Uh, thank you all for uh, viewing with us, but make sure. It's very important, just like Obed-Edom did, you know, and he was blessed. He went on to to, to do great, you know, and, and live a good life. It all comes from the presence of God, you know, and it, remember that his Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a filthy temple. It will not. It will not. You got to be cleaned up by the blood of Christ, and then he'll come in. Oh, yeah, and you'll be like Obed-Edom. You will not want to be without him. You'll board that old house up <laughs> and follow the presence of God. Truly, it's, again, it's a blessing, and I thank you all for viewing in. It's a must that you do this, especially in these old rough days. Make sure you clean it up, clean it up, clean it up, clean it up. And uh, I thank you all again, and prayers out to you all. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't uh, acknowledge the fact that uh, I was coming to you uh, as Latham, Reverend Latham Donald Jr. Our pastor is Pastor Latham Donald Sr., and our church is at 1761 Sheridan Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, 48214. You can call us or you can uh, inbox us. And then, uh, you know, you're more than welcome to come in. Come in and come and go with us because we are bound for that promised land. We will be going to see the Lord. So if you don't have a church home, come on, come with us. If you're not, you know, if you're bedridden or anything, can't come out, look, we'll come and see about you because we love you, you know, and the Christ in us loves you. So, uh, you know, we ask that you come and go with us. We are bound for that promised land. And to all the greater tree of life, you guys go on and, uh, and everyone listening, look, if you think you clean, Still go in in prayer and do some more good housekeeping. And make sure it's all straight. And I guarantee you, like Obed Edom, you'll see a difference. God bless you. We love you. And have a good day. Amen. So uh, what we're going to do, I'm so sorry. We're going to have a closing prayer. Our Father God, we come at this time thanking you, Lord God, for all of the love you showed us. Thanking you, Lord God, we ask that you would look down on the inside of us, Lord, and, and, and we ask that you would pour the blood of Christ down on the inside of us to purge us, Lord God, to clean us up, Lord, to make us good enough, Lord, for, for your spirit to be able to fall down on the inside of us, to walk us through this whole dark world, Lord God. Help God and direct us. Look on all that is under my voice, Father God. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion and fellowship of his Holy Spirit. Let it rest, rule and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen.